So your question was, that, what was your question that you just asked? Did they have their hands in slavery? Historically, yes. Meaning what? Did they have some of us enslaved? You dang right, yes they did. But it was all by design. Watch this, give me that in Isaiah. Where it says uh, Judah shall not vex Eve. You know what I'm talking about? Watch this, Esau set that up. Esau had, had them take us as slaves. Because when you really look at the history, uh, the so-called Seminoles, which is, which would be uh, the tribe of Reuben. Yes, Esau, basically Esau told them, look, either y'all put them in slavery or we're going to put all y'all in slavery. So what happened was, they had some of the Negroes, some so-called Negroes, go to the Seminole Indians. When the, white, when the so-called white man came back, guess where they had us at? They had us in rulership as princes and kings. Right, and Esau was like, I told you to put them in slavery. So you're right. It was the white man coming to cause division amongst the nation. Right. Yeah, you're right. They did have some of us, some of them did have us quote unquote slaves. But it was all out by design to cause division. Watch this, read that. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. Read. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Read. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. The Bible says Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Guess what? That spirit of division today, God is getting rid of that. We gotta come together. Right. The same envy, the same envy that you see today against blacks and Native Americans, blacks and Latinos. We, it's like there's a divide between us, is it not? But we the same people. We are the same people. We went through the same atrocities. We went through slavery. We went on slave ships. We go through the same. They killing their people in the street just like they killing our people in the street. Right. They get no justice, no peace, just like we getting justice, no peace. Read that verse again. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 13. Read. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Read. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. God said we got to stop doing that. Ephraim, which would be the so-called Native Americans, the so-called Hispanics, uh, uh, Northern Kingdom, which the Bible calls them. He said, God said, the envy shall depart from Judah. We're Judah, so-called black, so-called uh, West Indians, Haitians, Jamaicans. We Judah, God said, stop that envy. Because watch this, Jeremiah 50, 33. Jeremiah 50 and 33. Understand this, brother. You're learning your history today. It ain't, it ain't no coincidence that you stopped here today, that we was here today. God trying to call you, brother. God kind of tr trying to call you to the truth according to the Bible. Because guess what? Christianity has failed us. It's, it's right. evidence. Right. We've been in the How long we've been in the Christian church or so-called worshiping the, the so-called Christian church? Bring it out. For how long? And where has it gotten us? Nowhere. Right. But worse. It is, we are in a worse state with the Christian church. Why? Because they ain't, they're not doing what the Bible tells you to do. They telling you to do exactly what your oppressor wants you to do. And that's kill each other, steal from each other, rape, rob, and murder each other. That's exactly what they want us to do. That's why they won't read this Bible. Watch this, read that. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read, were oppressed together. We were oppressed together. Guess what? Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors came and, and slaughtered the so-called Native Americans and Hispanics right. in 1492. Guess what? Andrew Jackson came through and slaughtered the so-called Native Americans. Guess what? They did the same thing to us. Right. In 1619, we were slaughtered, taken on slave ships. We were, you read something, when you watch certain movies like Goodbye Uncle Tom and certain like that, you see Native Americans right there with blacks on the slave ships. Why is that? Because we read in Bible prophecy. God already told you what was going to happen. Read that verse again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. The children of Israel and the children of Judah, we were oppressed together. Read on. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And it says everybody that took us captive held us fast and they refused to let us go. Because think about it. We still here in America today, are we not? Right. Try to leave, if you try to leave America without a passport right now, what's gonna happen? If you don't have permission, what is gonna happen? Are you gonna get arrested and sent right back into slavery, right, right back into the prison system, right? Right back to jail. Because we are still in captivity today. We are still slaves. Yeah, we got we got quote unquote freedom. 
We have the illusion of freedom. Let us say this ain't real freedom. This is not real freedom. Stop paying your water bill. And not paying your water bill and nothing happening, that's real freedom. Not having to pay for rent, that's real freedom. Not having to worry about going to work and working to try to pay off this and pay off that and child support and this, that, and the third. That's free. We ain't free. Watch this. Give me Hosea. What you got? Read that. Here's the book of Baruch, chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Understand this, brother. We are in captivity. So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. Right. And we are still in captivity today. Read on. We are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us. Where God has scattered us. It is, it's historically proven we've, uh, we've been scattered throughout all the world. Right. On cargo slave ships and the transatlantic slave trade. Where's that post at? In 1619. This happened. Right. This is historical. You read about this in geography class. You read about this in history class. U.S. history. The transatlantic slave trade. Right. Guess what? We're reading it in the Bible. We are reading in the Bible. So why don't they read this in church? Why don't they bring this out in church? Because they don't want you to understand this. They don't want you to know your true identity. That's right. why your pastor would tell you, oh, it's okay, you can do whatever you want to, just believe in Jesus. Right. As long as you show up on Sunday, pay your tithes, believe in uh, white Jesus, you can do whatever you want. Ty, uh, the OG shooter man was a gangbanger his whole life. Got killed about 300 people. Died in a drive-by, but he going to heaven. Does that make any sense? Made, that's Christianity though. Right. That's what they teach in the church, is that not? They all at the funeral like, oh, he in a better place. Oh, he up in heaven. That's Christianity. God requires something more of you. Read that verse again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments. Be subject to payments here in this captivity. Read on. And accor according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord our God. And he's, he's telling you the reasons why all these things are happening. Why are we in captivity? Why are we on the bottom of society? Why are we a first, uh, first, uh, first fire, last hire? Why are we got the worst education? Why are we got the worst uh, food, uh, food establish establishments in our neighborhood? Why we have the worst neighborhoods? Because we broke God's commandments. We decided not to keep God's commandments. Hosea 4, verse 1. Hosea, Hosea, Hosea the 4th chapter and the first verse read. Hosea chapter 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Read. For the Lord hath the controversy with the inhabitants of the land. God has a problem with us. Understand this, brother. God has a problem with us. Why? Because we're walking around doing whatever we want to do. We, we, we are not subject to anything. Read on. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. He said he has a problem with us, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, because there's no truth, no knowledge of God in the land. Hold that. Give me Psalms. Chapter 119, verse, you know what I want, verse 142. Because let me ask you something. God said he has a problem with us because there's no truth in the land. What is truth? Let me ask you, what, what would you think truth is? It's okay if you don't know, just say, I don't know. I used to be on the other side, I don't know. What is the truth? A lot of people say they got the truth, right? Right. A lot of people say this is the truth, that's the truth, over here is the truth. But what is the actual truth? Because you believe in the Bible, right? So what, what, why don't you believe, why you say someone? And don't think I'm trying to get at you, I just want to understand. It seems like contradictions, maybe, right. Now, I understand this. There is no contradictions in the Bible. Right. What has happened, man has contradicted the Bible. Right. Christianity has contradicted the Bible. That's why they tell you don't read it. Because when you're in Christian church, do they really read the Bible? I'm talking about like really read the Bible in the sermons, in the church. Yeah, they might pull a few scriptures here, a few scriptures there, but they don't actually in depth go through the Bible in, right. in church, do they? No. The reason being is because it goes against what they're trying to teach. That's why when somebody actually sits down and reads the Bible, they're like, wait a minute. I know this was myself. I actually sat down and started reading the Bible. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a contradiction. This don't make no sense. 
And this is what y'all teaching up in church. The Bible says something different. Wait a minute. Man has contradicted the Bible. Man has contradicted the Bible. There is no contradiction in the Bible. Right. What the Bible says, that's what it is. God said he only came for the children of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The Christian Christianity said God came for everybody, right? Christianity said God loves the world, right? The Bible don't say that. You won't, yeah, you might find God so loved the world in the Bible, but that ain't what it means. Right. He, Christ was not Bring talking to everybody on the earth, right? He was talking to the Israelites. Like, for example, matter of fact, hold that. Give me read truth in there. We're gonna get John 3:16. Psalm chapter 119, verse 142. Let me show you, brother. Ain't no contradictions in the Bible. Man has contradicted the Bible. Right. Read that. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. The Bible says, thy law, thy law is the truth. This Bible, God's laws, what he said, that is the truth. To hell with what man says, it's what the Bible says. Now, give me John chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 16. Because this is a famous scripture that so-called Christians like to pull. Right. Even there, they probably over there like John 3.16. Even them over there, John 3.16. Right. Let's get the proper understanding of John 3.16. Read John chapter 3 Read verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So now, let's keep it in its context. Right. Let's actually keep John 3 verse 16 in its proper context. Jump up to verse 14. Watch this. John chapter 3 verse 14. Watch this. And as Moses. Yes, understand this. There was actually something happening in the third chapter of John. It wasn't because a lot of Christians like to just go, John 3.16. Okay, what was going on? What was going on surrounding John 3.16? Why did Christ say that? Who, who was Christ talking to? No one, ever, no one ever brings that out. Who was Christ talking to in John 3.16? Do you know? And, mo and understand this, brother, don't feel bad. Most people don't know it all. Right. They don't have a clue who Christ was Bring speaking it out. to. They think Christ was just speaking to the whole world. No. Watch this. John 3 verse 1. Let's see who Christ John, is speaking to. John chapter 3 verse 1. Read. There is a man of the Pharisees. A man of the Pharisees. Read. Named Nicodemus. Named Nicodemus. Read on. A ruler of the Jews. Christ was speaking to the ruler of the Jews. Now, jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Watch this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Christ told Nicodemus, he said, just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall Christ be lifted up. Who did, who did Moses lift up the serpent to in the wilderness? Was all nations there? Was it, was it to all nations in the wilderness? Under Moses, when they came out of Egypt. No, it wasn't all nations, it was Israel. That's who he lifted up the serpent for. Israelites, Christ was the same way. Christ will be lifted up just like that serpent. Read on. Verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Read. For God so loved the world. He continues on to explain who he's referring to. It's that same people that was in the wilderness. That's who he's referring to, for God so loved the world. Hold on, let's prove that though, because some people might still be confused, even yourself. Give me that and I'll say it. So let's understand what world uh, Christ was referring to. Because let me ask you a question. Is there more than one definition to the word world? There isn't? Now let me ask you this. When you actually look it up, there is. Because do you have a sea world? If I, if I ask you what the sea world is, what would, what would the sea world be? The world of the sea, right? Meaning fishes and stuff like that. The world of the basketball world, right? What would that be? What would that consist of? People that play basketball, right? There is multiple definitions to the word world. It can mean an entire, it can be the actual earth that we stand on, right? Or a group of people. Right. That's why you have the sea world, the basketball world, the hip hop world, right. the, uh, the uh, world, world, Disney world. Watch this. Let's get the context of the world that Christ was referring to. Read that. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. Read. But Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. You hear what that says? It says Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. How long is everlasting? 
It's forever. It don't end, right? Read on. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. World without end. What is the world that he's referring to right there? Israel. He says, Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation. World without end. Watch this. Go back. John 3 verse 16. John chapter 3 verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world. So the world that God loved was the Israelites. God did not love all nations. God did not love all people. God only loved the Israelites. Read on. That he gave his only begotten son. Got a question? What you mean Africans? Watch this. Give me uh, Exodus 11 and 7. I got you. What did he think about the Africans? We're not African. That's the thing. We're not African. We have been told we were Africans. Remember, because I understand this. When we first came here, oh, cargo slave ships to this side of the earth, were we called Africans? Were we called Africans? No, we were called Negroes. Right. The word African wasn't even referred to us. We were never referred to as Africans when we first came over here. Right. On this side of the earth. We were called Negroes. The word African-American didn't come into the, to the uh, uh, early 80s. Negro land. Negro land. Negro land and Jesse Jackson and that. African is a new term. We were never called Africans before that. We're not African. Right. We're not the same people. Watch right. this. Read that. This is the book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. Not every black person on this earth is the same. Right. We accumulate that. Okay, they black skin. Oh, they got to be us. No. You got some black Asians. Right. They hate our people. Watch this. Read. Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel that shall not a dog move his tongue Read. against man or beast that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians. The Egyptians. The Egyptians will be considered what? Africans, right? God said he put a difference between the Egyptians or Africans, read. Put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And Israel. There's a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Yes, we might have, we might look alike. Yeah, we might be mistaken for each other, but we are not Africans. Right. We are the Israelites, brother. Watch this. Let's prove that. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 chapter. Because what we're saying is true because we're getting it out the Bible. We the Israelites. We're not African. We've never been African. We are God's chosen people. We are blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.